You are listening to the How to Talk to Girls podcast with me, Trip Kramer. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the How to Talk to Girls podcast. I'm your host, Trip Kramer from tripadvice.com. If you are listening to this in real time, then happy freaking new year. It is the new year, new you, maybe, maybe not. I would assume that you're trying to be the new you if you're listening to this podcast, although it is very entertaining. We also know it's informational. So it's here to help you with meeting women, attracting women, and finding a relationship or finding casual relationships, basically having the dating life that you want. That's why you're listening. That's why you're here. If you're new here, well, welcome. I think I just gave you a quick summary of what this episode is all about. I should probably do this too, because I feel like not everyone who listens to the podcast listens to, of course, every episode. There's quite a bit. And you may not know who I am. Like, who is Trip? What's his background? Well, if you want a summary, I'll give you one right now. But also, if you want to read a little summary, you can always go to tripadvice.com slash about if you want to just learn a few things about me. But I'll give you, like I said, a little summary right now. Basically, I am you. People sometimes don't believe it or sometimes they do. I was just on the phone the other day with someone who wanted to do coaching and uh, he did say, you know, Trip, did you really get to the point where you figured out this whole woman thing? Because I saw pictures of you when you were younger and you looked like a big nerd. And I started cracking up and I'm like, dude, you're right. I really was. And yes, I was a guy who uh, was not good with women, who was constantly in the friend zone, but always a guy who desired to have an awesome relationship, or at the very least, be able to have fun and have casual relationships. So yes, I was a guy who was a nerd. Like I said, friend zone quite a bit, but I didn't realize I was struggling for a while. So that's what happened to me, is I did not realize that I was struggling. It always felt like this just is what it is, meaning... I was a guy who looked the way I did, acted the way I acted, so I would just be able to attract the kinds of women that would get thrown in front of me, right? I just That was it. Like That's all I could do if that were to ever happen. So yeah, I did have a a girlfriend in my late high school years, but uh, she was a girl who ended up cheating on me, and I know why. I was acting definitely very beta, very not dominant, and also very needy. So of course that happened. And then in my college years, I started to get a little bit more success with women, but never with the women that I wanted or ending up in the friend zone. Can't even tell you how many women I really wanted to be with, but I just friended them thinking something would happen. And of course, it didn't. So by my early 20s, that was the point where I realized, I should mention I'm 36 at the recording of this episode. And in my early 20s, I thought, okay, there's got to be something I can do here. And voila. Just around that same time, my friend introduced me to a little book called The Game. You might have read it. It's not a how-to book, but a story about guys who were pickup artists and figured out their way to having a system or techniques to be able to attract women, even though they were not super attractive guys or nerds themselves. So this was the first thing. And again, it's not very unique. I know a lot of guys entered the same way too as they found that book and they found the same thing as me, that there was a system or there was a way, there was something you could learn to be able to attract women. It just didn't have to be who you were. And so finding that, I dived into that book. I read the book like two or three times and then found more material online. And what happened with me was I ended up using some of the material And it just was really, really weird. It didn't connect with me. It felt strange using it. It did not produce any results. Now, I'm not saying that this stuff doesn't work because it actually does work. Like if you want to look up pickup techniques and all that stuff, it does work. I just couldn't bring myself or find myself to use it because it felt so strange. Like I remember one time there was something I read that was like, you you lie to a girl about the fact that you once dated a stripper and this is supposed to make her attracted to you. I mean, I wish I could make that up, but that is the truth. That is something that I found. And I didn't use it. I thought it was just ridiculous. I understand the concept behind it, right? Social proof. Something was a little weird there. I don't know where social proof would happen from saying that you dated a girl that was a stripper. I think that would make you look pretty dirty. But anyway, I guess the point here is is that didn't work with me. And so I went out And I 
just pushed myself with massive approach anxiety, massive approach anxiety, the push myself and push my way to being able to just start talking to women and seeing what would happen. So it was almost like an experiment to see what would happen if I just went out and started talking to women because I wasn't doing that before, maybe in a half-assed way if I would get drunk enough. But then I wanted to do this sober and I wanted to make this work. So I ended up coming across patterns, seeing what was working, what wasn't working. Also learning from other people and other coaches and taking some ideas from them and all putting it together in my own words, in my own way, and formulating what is now known as the TED system. So it is a system that actually helps you meet and attract women. I talk about it lots here on the podcast. I talk about it in full and in depth in my book, Magnetic, and in my course, my video course called Hooked. So that is a very long story short on how I ended up getting to this place. And then several years of discovering this kind of new method and just falling in love with this idea of helping guys get to the place where I was getting to, where I was sleeping with women and dating women who were super attractive. I never thought I'd be able to do in a million years and then cut to now in a long-term relationship with another beautiful woman uh, inside and out. You can even see pictures of us on my Instagram. And anyway, I fell in love with this process and I wanted to help guys. It's like I found my calling. And that's when I started Trip Advice. That was around 2011, so about 10 years ago. And I've been crafting and perfecting coaching and a system that any guy can use to be able to meet and attract women. That it's so simple and also completely not creepy and very natural and authentic and easy to teach in a sense too. Like I have another coach who works for me and I'll have more coaches in the future and they know the system in and out and it just works. It's simple, it's effective, and it gets down to the core information that guys need to learn about. In fact, that does bring me to today's episode. Today, you're going to get a taste of a little clip that I took from my mastermind. A mastermind is a group of people who are getting together to accomplish a goal. And so I have a mastermind that I do, that I run with guys who are interested. It's like a group coaching program, so to speak. I do it with anywhere from two, three, four guys. And what I do is I help them and I coach them through the whole process of meeting and attracting women through approaching women in person and through meeting women online. So what I do is I run this group and I do also one-on-one coaching and I have another coach who does one-on-one coaching too. But I run this group and it's every week for a period of six weeks. Sometimes guys stay in longer, but it's a period of six weeks and I help guys get to the point where they have this system and they understand the TED system and they understand how to be able to use the two best ways to meet women in person approaching and online dating to be able to get more dates. So what I did was... Just last week, I did a little bit of editing and took a about 25-minute chunk clip from one of the recordings of the Mastermind. So this is something that happened just recently. For confidentiality purposes, I blank out any names. So any names, or I should say any blank spaces, that it's going to all of a sudden it just kind of goes blank. That's in the space of where one of my clients' names would be. I did ask them permission to use it. They were totally cool with it. They didn't even care about their names being on there. But I said, you know, I just want to hold up my end of the deal and make sure that everything's confidential. So I did that. And what you're going to hear is really powerful stuff. I don't normally take any clips from coaching calls. I did at one point. uh, You can see some live coaching calls here on the podcast from last year. There's about five or six of them. And those were awesome. But I don't do it too often. I've never done it from my mastermind. And I just thought I went on this amazing rant. And of course, I'm always thinking about you, my friends who listen to the podcast. And I thought, like right in the middle of giving this really good coaching rant, teaching about limiting beliefs and self-esteem and approaching, I thought, I got to use this. I got to have this on the podcast as a way to help you, to teach you, to coach you right here and now. So even though I'm coaching them, I'm also coaching you. And also, of course, give you a little bit of an insider's look at coaching itself and how the mastermind works. And then 
maybe you want to join it. Maybe you want to come and be part of the mastermind and get results. If you do, you can go to coachedbytrip.com. That link is always and always will be in the show notes if you want to apply to work either in the mastermind or work with me one-on-one. The coaching program is in full effect, especially this year in 2022. And we're going to just be helping as many guys as possible. I want to help a lot of guys this year, of course, in the podcast, but also in the coaching program. So if you want to join, you can apply and well have either myself or a team member read the application and then we'll get on the phone with you and see if you are a good fit and to see if coaching would help you. So anyway, what we're going to be listening to here is all about mindsets. So a lot of guys have trouble approaching, especially approaching very attractive women and they don't have the right mindsets. Instead, they have what's called a limiting belief. So we all have beliefs. Some beliefs are limiting. It limits them. It stops them from getting what they want. That's why they call it a limiting belief. So a lot of guys, and these are all the same limiting beliefs that I had when I was first learning this many years ago. And a lot of guys have these and it prevents them from approaching women. It prevents them from getting results with women. And it makes them look down on themselves. It's interesting that the limiting beliefs are all surrounded by how we feel about ourselves and our self-esteem. And it's crazy the way we we speak to ourselves. And you're going to hear a little bit here on this coaching call, on this mastermind coaching call, what's going on in the heads of guys. And you are going to for sure relate to this. I just know it. You're going to hear this and go, wow, me too. And let me tell you something. I know that there's going to be, an, and I really believe this, a lot of guys who are going to be like, wow, yes, it's crazy how we're all going through the same thing. And then I'm here to help you and you're going to hear me giving you some really hard-hitting, powerful mindsets to fix all of these limiting beliefs. So I want to get into it. I want to get into it right now. Again, I want to wish you a happy new year if you're listening to this in real time. And thank you for joining me in the past six years of doing this podcast. Actually, hold on. I think it's seven now. Damn, it is seven years. We're in our seventh year of doing the podcast. And as you know, I'm obsessed with it. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite things to do in trip advice in terms of content creation. I really enjoy it. So thank you for being a listener if you have for so many years. And if you're new here, welcome Again, your options are plentiful if you want to do and help yourself beyond the podcast coaching. If you want to apply, coachedbytrip.com. If you want a video course, my video course called Hooked, you can check out getherhooked.com. Link for that is also in the show notes. Or if you want a book, if you're more of a reader or an audiobook kind of person, you can check out my book, Magnetic, which teaches you everything about how to become rejection-proof and attract the women you desire and do it in a natural way. That book is available on Amazon. That link will also be in the show notes. So lots of options for you. And in the meantime, why don't you just get a little teaser? Well, a lot of a teaser, about 25 minutes of a teaser of how coaching works and hopefully it helps you today. Check it out. Another thing that just came up when I was doing the approaches that I just wanted your perspective on real quickly is like, I think I've identified one of the things that I get where I get in my way, but, uh, and I think it's that I don't want to disturb people or I don't want to bother people. Right. Um, and when I go, that's a, that's a very common limiting belief. Do you know how to attack that limiting belief? I mean, just do it anyways, I guess. I can't seem to get rid of it. Okay. So I'll I'll help you out. Um, So you got to remember that it's always, it always comes back to self esteem. Like if you feel like you're a guy Mm -hmm. worth uh, having a a girl or an amazing woman, yeah, then you're going to offer yourself up to do that approach because you're almost going to feel like you're doing her a favor. Yeah. Um, To be a little more specific. Okay. Like I'd go by and I encountered this a lot. There'd be a woman I w- that was pretty that I wanted to talk to and mm-hmm. she'd be with another woman. And that and that was like, she wasn't pretty and I didn't want to, you know. Uh, so you're I, talking about approaching groups then? 
two couples, gen- generally two women going together. Got it. And okay. my concern, the fear that came up for me was, I don't want to go up, tell one girl that she's really pretty and make the other one all, you know, sad or insecure or whatever. Cause I was talking to just that one girl. Yeah. So, um, in, in war, there's casualties. So just understand that when you're going up and first of all, when you're going up and doing it, mm-hmm. I mean, I give you a warm up approach. That's not the approach that you're going to do from now on, unless it's to warm up. I actually just emailed you guys, but don't check your email yet just so we can focus. I just emailed you guys a sequence for what you're going to say when you now do the regular approaches. And when you go over there, the first line is not going to be, you're very pretty. It's actually going to be, hey, two seconds, I wanted to come meet you. Okay. And so yes, you will have to do that. If there's two girls and one is cute and the other is not, I still encourage you to do it. And what you do is you open up the girl that you're interested in with that line. So it's very clear on why you're over there. But then you can start to talk to both of the women and you don't have to leave the other one out. Yeah. So that's how that works. It's tough. Um, Really, none of this stuff is that hard. It's more just tough mentally, getting over the mental barriers and the blocks and the limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. So when you're going over and you're doing that approach... Think about it in the sense where you're giving yourself an opportunity. You're giving the girl that you are interested in an opportunity. And we don't know how the other person is going to think. Maybe she's got a boyfriend. Maybe she's married. Maybe she doesn't even think you're attractive. So she doesn't care. Maybe she's so happy that her friend is going to be meeting a guy right now that her friend gets an opportunity. So don't make up excuses. Don't assume. That is what usually gets in the way of guys' success with initiating the approach. You like to assume all of these different ideas that you have no idea are true or nor, or, nor false. Mm-hmm. So the main thing here is... And this is the thing that is the, is the ultimate mindset. This will pretty much... If you just start to really embody this mindset, you will not you will have a much easier time approaching any person you want to. So here's the mindset. The mindset is you have to really just focus on your path and your mission and not worry so much about the reaction of the people that you're talking to. Guys worry and betas worry about how how is this person going to react? Are they going to be upset? Are they going to like me? You need to just throw all of that out the window. You're not hurting anybody. You know, I don't know. Maybe you do accidentally offend a girl. Okay, she'll get over it. Mm-hmm. And maybe this is a good lesson to her. Maybe she needs to do something to look more attractive. Just being honest, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, like what what are we going to do? Sit around here and just not do anything because. Some girl might get hurt, her hurt by indirectly, by the way, indirectly hurt. Yeah, I guess it, it, it's not for me to not do it. I, I wasn't thinking that, but I'm thinking, man, maybe there's another way to do this that's going to be, you know, less, you know, a slap in the face to the other girl. But you were, whether it's something small or big, you were concerned about how they were going to think. Yeah. So what I want to get you to do is don't worry at all what they think. At all. You I want I want you to focus on how you feel, not in relation to how they feel, just how you feel. Uh-huh. I want you to focus just on the goal which this week is going to be for you doing a set amount of approaches and that's it. Everyone else, trust me when I say this, everyone else is going to be just fine. You're not doing anything creepy. You're not doing anything offensive. In fact, you're doing quite the opposite. You're doing something that is... And again, I know we're... I'm kind of talking even beyond approaching a group. Just like, I want to give you this mindset because this is going to come up all the time. Even if there's just one girl sitting there or five girls or whatever it is. 
We don't care about their reaction. All we care about is getting the approach done and getting better at the approach. And everything else will fall as it will. She'll be fine. Everything will be okay. But what, what, what I've noticed is what pushes guys away from doing approaches and where approach anxiety gets in the way is thinking too much about everyone else and not thinking about you. What are your, what are your, anyone can chime in now. What are your thoughts on, on what I said there? Does that connect with you a little bit? Do you have any questions about that? You can challenge me on it. Like Whatever we need to do to get your help. Well, I think for me, it's just seeing myself as a prize. You know, it's just, I mean, that, that takes away most of the, you know, most of them Mm -hmm. um, in terms of limiting beliefs. But I mean, if you're, if you're going in offering value, you know, and not trying to take anything, I mean, it just, what's really, what's the worst that can, that can come of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. And so let's play, let's play a little. That's the um, thing is, I, I feel a little bit like I am coming in to take something as opposed mm-hmm. to offer value. Well, um, what are you taking? I'm taking their attention when they're in the middle of something. I'm interrupting whatever they came. That's here. one way to think about it. What's the other right. way to think about it? Uh, I'm here for them to meet a great dude who's uh, super positive and got lots of things going for them and will entertain them. Yes. Well, I don't really love the idea of entertaining them because, but I know that but, was just but, the but yes, but yes, they will be enjoying the moment based off of you having a good time. So yes, right. that will be a result for sure. Um, so with this, uh, let's go one by one. Let's start with you real quick. Trying to so I, I I do this thing where I tell guys like well tell me what's awesome about you tell mm-hmm. me why you have value why you're a cool guy let's I'm gonna do this this time in the uh, in, with, with the inverse so I want you guys to tell me start with you tell me why you're not a great guy okay why are you what is it about you that's not that that doesn't have value or 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 and and don't necessarily think about it in terms in relation to women even just think about it in terms of self esteem like make a case for me if you can mm-hmm. maybe maybe you can't and then that kind of proves a point but make a case for me of why what's what's so bad about you. why but I guess my question is is why aren't you the prize okay uh, I'm not the prize because uh, I suck energy. From people like when I when I'm around them, I, I come in and I I have expectations for them to fill me up with energy for them to entertain me. Um, I'm not the prize because I'm insecure. Now hold on, let's start. We'll start with that one. Is that is that happening in these approaches? No, because I'm I'm intentionally you know coming in with a lot of energy. Exactly. Okay, so we'll cross that one off. What was your next one? Um, I, or else are you not the prize? Because I'm insecure, and uh, I'm yeah. Because I worry, I, I get anxious a lot, and I worry too much about what other people think. Okay, you worry too much about what other people think. Okay, yeah. what else? Um, I. Uh, I, I haven't got all my physical shit uh, figured out, uh, so I, I have. Are you are you severely obese? No, I'm not. Are you a twig? Nope. I'm just okay. saying it affects my energy level. <clears throat> oh, it affects your energy level. You're not talking about your physical attractiveness. Yeah, I haven't been able to unlock the whole sleep uh, issue, and so that drags on my energy. What's your sleep issue? Um, I have sleep apnea. I did the. Um, I did a CPAP machine for years. Ultimately, it ended up like um, kind of messing me up, and I decided to that I was going to have to find the root cause instead of treating the symptom. And uh, I haven't figured it out yet, as I've been trying to do a bunch of other things too. 
Okay, so that's causing you to not have energy. What does that mean exactly? Are you falling asleep? I, I'm kind of fatigued on a certain level all the time, and so sort of tired on a certain level all the time. So, like, life is kind of a struggle. Even though I, I love my life, I'm doing a lot of great things. You know, I'm good. life is a bit of a struggle. Okay, and, and how so then that would mean that other people, when they're around me. We have to be with a guy that where life was a struggle instead of just some guy. So, who's got so if you're if you're seeing a woman a couple times a week, yeah, you think that that's going to affect that? Uh, I don't think if I, I think if I prepare myself, I no. Okay, so we can cross that one off. But yes, I agree. These are definitely things that need to be worked on. Right, yeah. these are things that need to be worked on in the background. Mm-hmm. The idea of, of whatever you need to do to get the energy levels up and 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 work on the sleep apnea. So, and that being said, I yes, am working yes. on that stuff. I'm just not there yet. Yeah, and hey, I would say that's an argument for someone who is someone of value because yeah. you are in the process of personal development, where some people will just go with a loser mentality and 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 victim mentality and be like, "Yeah, I have this problem. Woe is me!" Right? But yeah, it's not you. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm failing to see where any of this is going to have any effect on a woman being attracted to you, uh, except for the idea of the insecurities, mm-hmm. which yes, that will come about. But uh, remember that self-esteem is built through two things. One, your peer group. So if you surround yourself with people, this is an example of this mastermind. You're surrounding yourself with people who are, who are building each other up, we're working on things. So having a positive peer group and two, keeping the promises that you make to yourself. So you did all the homework and then some this week. Mm-hmm. Did you feel good about yourself? Yeah, I did. There you go. So that's self-esteem right there. So I think you got to remind yourself of why you are someone who is quality and really challenge yourself on some of the things like we just did this exercise now like cha- really challenge yourself i'm like okay yeah i've insecurities and be as specific as possible mm-hmm. and 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 do this you know for this week really challenge yourself on some of the negative beliefs you have or the beliefs that you are not the prize cuz most of it is just a bunch of mental yeah, no, I actually I love myself a lot, and I'm a fan of myself. Um, it's there's some connection between that and bothering people, and in, you know, like not being. You're right on the self esteem. Like there's some sense of not good enough to be worth interrupting whatever they're doing. So that's there. Do, do women want to meet men? Yeah, they the, do. Do single women want to meet? Men, yeah, they they do. Some men. <laughs> do single women want to meet uh, an awesome guy? Yes. Okay. And do they? Would they take an opportunity, any given opportunity, to be able to do that? I think the answer to that is yes. Yeah. Women want. Most women want a relationship. I would even go as far as to say all women want a relationship on some level. Uh-huh. So you're giving them that opportunity and you're doing it with who you are. And it's really about believing that you are a guy who's worth doing that. So that has nothing to do with the interruption. So we can just cancel that out too. So there's no such thing as interrupting anymore. That shouldn't even be in your vocabulary. You're not, you're not interrupting. You're no. giving someone an opportunity. I mean, interrupting. We're talking about like, I would say that that's like a term where it's almost like got has such a negative connotation to it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, maybe you're stopping them for a second and what they're doing. I would call that giving them an opportunity to meet you. That is far more the situation than it is. Well, I'm really interrupting their day. I've stopped their day. Mm-hmm. And then you can, I know some people might argue and say, well, what if they reject you? Then they didn't want to meet you. And what's the deal with that? Well, that's kind of life here. And you got to come back to doing what you need to do to get the results in your life. And you're not hurting anyone 
by talking to them for 30 seconds. Okay. And I wouldn't, I just wouldn't feel too guilty about that. So okay. r- the risk is worth it for all parties involved. Let's go to you real quick. Why aren't you, why are, why are you not the prize? Well, the biggest thing that I just thought of was I haven't been in the past. So that's, I guess that's kind of always there, just, you know, in the back burner. If the past will. doesn't exist. The past is actually not real. There is no such yeah. thing as the past. Yeah. The past is only thoughts. Yeah. That's it. I, I guess I just... Since I've... I don't know. Since I've struggled with this, you know, most of my life, or at least what I remember of it, um, just, you know, struggled to get the girls that I've actually wanted. Why wouldn't that pattern continue? You know, why... How can I say this? <clears throat> if I, I feel like if I, if, if I were, you know, a prize, why, like, why am I, you know what I'm saying? Like, why, why do I have to like go through like this program? Why do I have to go through, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, no, I like that. That's a, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. That, that's a, I like that case right there. Well, I think that there's a difference between someone who has value and someone who has value and knows how to show it. But more Mm -hmm. specifically, when it comes to building attraction, Mm -hmm. there are steps that you need to take and rules you need to follow to be able to spike the emotions of a woman. Yeah. So if you learn those things, then Mm -hmm. you can bridge the gap between you and a woman who then gets to know the guy who is the prize. But as a guy in society, we don't... um, We'll say this. Women are not as attracted to the visual and the looks as they are the behaviors. Mm -hmm. So it's just not going to happen in the way where all of a sudden women are going to be coming to you. You need to go to them. And you need to be working on the behaviors that are attractive. Mm -hmm. And And then to kind of put a little nice bow on it all is you are a guy who knows that when you go on a date with her, when you're talking to her on that approach, if if you end up sleeping with her, if you end up getting in a relationship with her, then you're an awesome guy to be around. But that mindset has to be there from the very beginning. Yep. So that's... So the, yeah, that's... Well, and that's one of the reasons why you are in this program and you've not gotten to that point is because you either A... I'm just saying this to really you or just in general. Like, A, you haven't given yourself enough enough opportunities. So you're not in the grind. You're not approaching. You're not swiping. You're not doing, you're not putting in the legwork. And maybe you are. Well, then you're not optimizing how that process is going. You're just kind of like throwing yourself out there and hoping for the best. And that doesn't work either, right? I can sit there if we want to use the analogy of like fishing. I can sit there all day, seven hours a day trying to fish, but if there's no bait on the hook, nothing's going to happen, right? So you kind of yeah. need that combination of both. Mm-hmm. Why else aren't you the prize? Um, another thing I just thought of was I feel like I could be having more fun in different situations and, you know, depending on the environment or what, you know, the event that I'm at or the. Mm-hmm. Just wherever I am with, you know, with friends, with women, with whoever. I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like, I should be having more fun. That's totally everyone, me too, by the way. Everyone seems to be having a just a little bit more fun. Sometimes, not not all the time, but um, I was going to say that. Okay. Okay. What would make it fun for you? I don't know. I I guess I don't know. I. I I feel like a lot of this... Isn't it fun to meet women? I know it's yeah. hard. Oh, of course. But isn't it fun? It's kind of like, you know, playing basketball or learning an instrument. It's like, ah, it's hard and get frustrating. But at the end of the day, it should be fun. I can't imagine anyone... People, you know, you enjoy, you ultimately enjoy the presence of a, fem- of a beautiful female. Yeah. You know? So I would hope that it, even that in itself should be 
encouraging to enjoy it, or mm-hmm. at least as a as a goal, as a as a as a process, as trying to accomplish something mm-hmm. that you can make it fun in that. That's what I did when I when I started learning all this stuff. I completely gamified it. Mm-hmm. Like I turned it into a game in the sense where how do I get better at this? Mm-hmm. How do I get better at the process of meeting women? And I tried to have fun through the process. Okay, creating goals, going out to certain places, with doing a certain amount of approaches, working on my look, working on my conversation skills, working on my flirting skills. So I wonder if any of that connects with you guys of like gamifying it in that sense of making it where it can be fun because it's fun to just achieve something like a game. It's fun to win a game. And two, you know, this isn't math, right? That's that can be boring for most people. This is like talking to cute girls. Mm-hmm. And that energy right there in itself actually can really help with attraction. Well, it does. I guess it's the E in my TED system, right? E is entertainment, entertaining yourself. Mm-hmm. So it's like if you're having a fun time, they're gonna have a fun time. And and in consequence, they're gonna see that you're this confident guy because you're just loose and having a fun time. Yeah, yeah it is fun. Yeah. So uh, any, any, what else on there? Anything else to add on, on why you think that you're not a guy um, worthy of, of approaching a woman or giving a woman the time of day to meet a guy like you? Well, I guess to piggyback a little bit on what I just said, I guess... I put way too much pressure on myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm definitely like I'm. I'm definitely my own worst critic, and I. I feel like it's gone to the extreme. It's you know, mm-hmm. um, where I definitely just I don't know. I beat myself up for for no reason. Yeah. Um, Were your parents like that? Um, Were they hard on you? I mean, not. I wouldn't say any anything out of the ordinary, but um, I don't know. I've just always like <laughs> been been very critical, just about whatever whatever I I try to set out and accomplish. I, I think that you're focused so much in the future that you mm-hmm. should think about the things that you have accomplished. Mm-hmm. Yep. Have you accomplished anything in the past year? Oh yeah, a ton. Name five things. I mean, um, I've gotten into some very exclusive events and parties. Um, I've grown my network, I mean, exponentially um, since I moved to to LA. I've, um, I mean, I've, I think I've read. It can be a little or big. It doesn't have to be massive. Anything. Yeah. I think I've read like 70 books this year. Uh, Damn. Com- like combined, like, audio and and uh regular um okay two more i've taken yeah i mean i've i've leveled up in you know various skills such as like photography uh videography there you go yeah i mean yeah it's there you go when i when i think about it you've accomplished quite a bit so i know i said earlier the past isn't (laughs) real um this is one of those cases where it's okay to look at what you've accomplished. So it's okay to look in the past there. But mm-hmm. also, the past isn't real. So look where it's brought you today. Who mm-hmm. are you today? So really, it's not even about the past. It is about the present. You are mm-hmm. a person who sits here today who mm-hmm. has accomplished those things. Mm-hmm. That is the sum of who you are and who we are talking to right now. Mm-hmm. So all this stuff I'm saying here, guys, this is... This is the the meat of of when we're saying you're the prize, or AKA self esteem, self worth. So really, we are hard on ourselves. We're mm-hmm. our we are our worst enemies. I think I think everyone is their worst enemy, and it really all the time. Like there's no one who is worse to you than yourself. You you would never say the things. To other people 
that you say to yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, the negative stuff, the insults, the feeling bad for yourself. Most of the time, in most cases, you would never ever talk to someone like that. But we do it to ourselves all the time. So you need to be your own cheerleader. And what I'm teaching you right now too is kind of the skill in being your own coach. Because I won't be here. And I'm not there. When you guys are doing your approaches, I'm not there. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you, you know, even if I was next to you, you still have to be there doing the approach. Talking to the girl. So in those moments, you have to coach yourself and be your biggest cheerleader and remind yourself why you're awesome. And if you're sitting there and you're thinking, I'm not, I don't know, there's nothing about me that's awesome. Well, then I think you know what to fix. But I don't think you guys have that problem. I think you guys have so many good things going for you. And I wouldn't, I'm not just saying that to, you know, boost, you know, boost your morale right now. I would be honest. I would say, yeah, you don't have much going for you and you need to work on those things. And, but I've been coaching for 10 years. I can, I mean, I can count on my hand how many times I've really even had to say that to a guy. You don't need to be this like, I've traveled the world and I've, I have a Nobel Prize and I, you know, it's like you don't need all those things. 